the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Those of you who have been here every Sunday have another sermon on being the bread of life. How many Sundays now have we had this in a row? Is anybody counting? Is, this is the third. This is the third. And as in Bible study, we all like scratching our heads saying, what's different about this set of verses from what we heard last week and the week before? And the answer is there's a whole lot different. Uh, do you notice how in your face the language is? Eat my flesh and drink my blood. How many people are a little uncomfortable at that? Just a tad. Yeah, yeah. That's not how we say it sacramentally. We know that these words are referring to the Eucharist, but they're also referring to the internalization of the humanness of, of Jesus Christ and his godliness. We know he is fully human and fully divine. So Jesus is showing everyone how we absorb that. We, we use these metaphors all the time. We chew on that until we understand it, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest scripture. So we use our gastrointestinal tract a lot to talk about how we absorb Scripture. At the beginning of John, remember, the word of jo the word of God is God. In the beginning was the word, and the word was God, and the word was with God. So part of the creation of the world is who we're talking about, who Jesus is. So part of this creation of the world, this God force, is being given to you. And He says that I will shed my life for you for you to have eternal life. Now, this is a twist from the other three Gospels. The other three Gospels stress that Jesus died for our sins. How many people believe that? Don't be afraid. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. John doesn't say that, or Jesus in John doesn't say that. He stresses that I give my life to give you eternal life. And if you look in this reading and circle how many times life or eternal life shows up, it's all over the place. So if the only way we can receive eternal life is to believe in Jesus Christ, and he tells us that he is the bread, and he is the wine, do we believe that? We had a whole reformation over this question, by the way. <laughs> and a huge split on whether we really believe that we're taking the bread and the wine. But not only are we receiving the reality of Jesus Christ in the bread and the wine, the physicality of him, we're receiving the physicality of him as we try to discern the word. As you read the footnotes in your Bible, as you're praying these anatomically uh, driven psalms, the Beatitudes, I hunger and thirst for righteousness. Do you hunger and thirst for righteousness? Eat my flesh. Drink my blood. It's mixing vampire movies with our holiest of holies, embodying Christ in ourselves and our lives. So to understand why he's being so graphic and pushing on this, you have to go into the community that helped form these words in the Gospel of John. We know there was a community involved in the creation of this gospel. Probably all four gospels were written within the community of believers. This community had a huge crisis going on, which is part of the gospel according to John. The crisis was they were being kicked out of their worship space. They were told they are no longer welcome in the synagogues, and the doors were bolted against them. Outside of the synagogue, they were throwing banana peels and rotten tomatoes at them and saying, these people are eating Jesus' flesh and they're drinking Jesus' blood. Ew. And they were teasing them about the most precious part of the Eucharist. How would you feel if this scripture is being written for your benefit? that you hear in these words what they are using as a taunt made holy by none other than Jesus himself. 
would you feel a balm of some sort and a power that you can embody these words with confidence and with self-assuredness that yes, we are eating Jesus and we are drinking Jesus because he said he's there. That's all we need to know. But there's another thing that would help with this reading and that's if we had the next verse which is left off of our liturgy here. The last verse we have is, but the one who eats this bread will live forever. And the verse following it says, he said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. He was in the synagogue. He said these things in the synagogue. In other words, in the holiest of holy places, which the believers of Jesus were good Jews. This is their home. He said these words, and they heard it, but they just didn't understand it. And truth be told, we don't understand it. We come out of here usually going through the rote motions. They're comfortable. We're used to putting out our hands, and we're used to sticking the bread in. It's all kind of what we're used to. But what if, like the first time you fall in love, what if you smell the essence of the bread? What if you see the colors of the flowers on the altar? What if all of a sudden you see these people here in this congregation as if you're seeing them for the first time and you love them? What if you feel what it's like to be Jesus Christ and carry righteousness and kindness and justice around with you everywhere you go? In the year 2000, I went on a retreat to the convent of St. Helena. My marriage had just ended, my second marriage, so I was feeling pretty bad about life in general and even worse about myself. On the last day of the retreat, I went into the chapel of the good, no, it's called the Chapel of the Ascension, excuse me. I went into the chapel, which is all glass and kind of like a pyramid, like they built in the 70s, but we don't do anymore. Um, and I got on my knees on a prayer cushion, and I put a prayer bench under my spine where I sat on it. And I went into contemplative prayer. I was all alone in that chapel. And I was sitting pretty much up front by the altar. When I began to pray, it was wordless. But um, I hadn't been in this position for very long when I felt this incredibly hard slap on my cheek. Wham! And at the same time, I felt this incredible love, compassion, safety, abundance of absolutely the biggest love I have ever felt, and it was all directed at me. Pain, love. I felt like I was abiding in God, and I was being slapped at the same time. When you follow Jesus and eat his flesh, and drink his blood, it's gonna hurt. Does it hurt? If you're bringing righteousness and justice, does it hurt? It hurts. I even felt the imprint of the hand after the hand left. But that abundant lifting up of my heart, we lift up our hearts at the Eucharist, I had never felt love like that. I had never, and I've never forgotten it. But I remember them together. Slap on the face. You are loved unreservedly. Follow me. Eat this bread. Drink this wine. We are called here to wake up and smell the coffee of the good news. Each one of the words in our scripture hits us differently each time we hear it. We hear new things. Thank God for that. And we remind each other of different things. And whatever is happening in our life is not random. It has meaning, and it's meaning that draws us together as a community. We eat the bread together. We drink the wine together. And together we carry the pain of what it costs us to be a Christian.